Hello and welcome to the first part in this look back at Resident Evil 3. There's a couple of introductory cutscenes so I'm going to shut up and let you enjoy them. It all began as an ordinary day in September. An ordinary day in Raccoon City. A city controlled by Umbrella. No one dared to oppose them and that lack of strength would ultimately lead to their destruction. I suppose they had to suffer the consequences of their actions, but there would be no forgiveness. If only they had had the courage to fight. It's true that once the wheels of justice begin to turn, nothing can stop them. Nothing. It was Raccoon City's last chance, and my last chance. My last escape. This is Chopper Delta, preparing to drop off at area E95074. And that sort of sets the game up, sort of shows you what's going on, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of that actually is. Uh, the opening scene is in uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse, which is the second film in the se uh, film series, if I'm correct. Um, it's based around three, so... Um, this is a game I got for my birthday in 2000. I got it as part of one of those buy two games for a certain price. I can't remember how, how much they were. I got it with Resident Evil Survivor. And the reason I really wanted it was really because I, after t Resident Evil 2, I kind of, well, I, I don't know, I just kind of went off Resident Evil a little bit, I suppose, and I, I knew 3 was out and everything, and I just kind of forgotten about it type thing, and uh, my friend managed to get it. And I played it, I think, around his house, and it just got me really back into it, um, so that's the reason I really wanted it. Uh, this is probably one of my favourites in the series. September 28th, daylight. The monsters have overtaken the city. Somehow, I'm still alive. going to be any rescue. We have to get out of here. No! I'm not going anywhere. I'd rather starve to death in here than be eaten by one of those undead monsters. Now leave me alone! Um. 
Um, unfortunately, that guy does, I think, get eaten by zombies uh, a bit later on. Uh, you can only find it if you can return to this p part of the game, uh, into this warehouse, I think it is, um, uh, later on in the game. Um, he's got one of the secret files as well. There's, If you collect all the files, you get a secret file at the end. Uh, it's Jill's Diary, I believe it's called. I could be wrong. And uh, when you come back, you find him dead, and inside that container where he's hid himself, uh, he's got his diary. But you can only get that file if you return back to this part, which is kind of a pest because uh, there's a lot more zombies and I think dogs as well. I could be wrong on that. Um, I did say just before that cutscene that this was one of my favorite games in the series. Reason really is because there's a there's, it's really sort of and even though it's got the same aspect of Resident Evil One and Two, and um, it kind of evolves on that and adds new things like what I'll be explaining. I'm going to show you in this book uh, now. Um, it's got things like live action events, which you can choose what happens out of two options, which I really think was a really good idea. Also now you've got shooting barrels, if you press R2, um, I'm not sure what it is on the GameCube version, you can like take a whole group out of zombies with one bullet. Um, emergency escape, emergency dodge, I think it's called. Um, emergency escape is where like, a zombie's going for you and you can just shove him back or her back. Um, emergency dodging is where like a dog or a hunter because the hunters are back in this one. Uh, dive at you, you can sort of just roll out the way. But yeah, I think it's sort of one of the... That's the real reason why I love... Uh, I like this game. Oh, what the hell, I love this game. <laughs> but yeah, it is a bit really nice, some of the nice additions. And there's the live selection thing now, uh, just come up. You sort of like got, for example, you've got like, I think at one point, um, you're on a bridge and Nemesis turns up and you've got a choice of jump off the bridge or stay on the bridge and push him off, um, things like that. And each action of that determines what happens. So there's never, and another thing actually, um, a lot of the puzzles are random as well in this one, so it's quite frustrating, but in a good way. Is there a good frustrating? What I mean is it's nice um, that puzzles are different so you're not going to go oh I know how to do this puzzle um, and it's different um, another addition is the gunpowder where you like you'll see it. Oh, there is some in, in this office actually in a minute um, you can make your own ammo basically and eventually once you keep using that ammo it'll evolve into an enhanced ammo which I believe is much stronger and um, sometimes it doesn't look like it but I actually do believe it is stronger I mean, create grenade rounds with it as well because there aren't many in here. I think, I think there's freeze rounds is a new addition. Um, acid and grenade and flame. And um, if you can see them little red containers over there, that's where the gun thing is. I'm just going to check items and put items away. And what I was saying about the live action also is I didn't finish it because I it just dawned on me so I was going to explain something else. Um, it kind of determines what happens. So like, different characters will go different places different they'll turn up different places nemesis will appear different places um, and it dep kind of depends who lives and survives at the end but I don't think it has much impact on the hero characters and um, also with that then that gunpowder I find if you separately use the reloading tool so don't combine the gunpowders and um, it'll evolve quicker into the enhanced ammo. Um, I ain't using a secret uh, special costume uh, basically because the save I had on my PlayStation 1 memory card um, had all unlimited ammo and I just didn't think there was any point in me showing you a playthrough with unlimited ammo when I'm beating everything easily. It, it didn't seem like it'd be much fun uh, to do really. So that's the reason. Um, and I had all like the secret costumes as well. But once I complete the game I'll show you them. Um, to be honest, this is probably one of the most popular Resident Evil costumes. I don't think we need to ask why. Um, why I don't know why they did that to Jill. Why they made Jill dress up like that? It doesn't. I mean, from what I've seen of her in Resident Evil One, you wouldn't think she would dress like that. But you know, that's sort of a stereotype, I suppose. But I mean, it's in a, been used in a, I think two games. Uh, it's been reused in um, I think the GameCube remake and Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D 
on the 3DS is the only thing. Um, well, they've, it's pretty much identical, I think. Uh, the only difference is that she has her gloves from Resident Evil 1 on. And there was one of the barrels just gone past that you can explode. And um, that's really it for this part. Uh, just get past these zombies. And I think that's going to be it. Um, where I'm going to leave this part. Um, so thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully you'll join me for the next part. Because I have rightly buggered this up because I've gone the wrong way. I thought it was this way, but it's actually the other way. It's quicker to go. Anyway, thank you for watching this part. I will hopefully see you for the next part.